While SpaceX is consistently testing its launch vehicle, NASA seems to be taking baby steps. SLS vs. Starship, which is more capable of orbiting outer space. Everybody was shocked when the news of SLS being chosen as a lunar lander alongside SpaceX and other commercial launchers was known. SpaceX and NASA completely disagree in terms of their approach towards launch vehicle development, as seen in their highly contrasting tests performed in early December. Are there more similarities than differences between SLS and Starship's SLS vs. Starship? Which of these two is more powerful? Let's find out. The SLS – Space Launch System NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, is a super heavy lift launch vehicle that provides the foundation for human exploration beyond Earth's orbit. With its unprecedented power and capabilities, SLS is the only rocket that can send Orion astronauts and cargo to the moon on a single mission. Offering more payload mass, volume capability, and energy, SLS is designed to be flexible and evolvable and will open new possibilities for payloads, including robotic scientific missions to places like the Moon, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. The SLS team is producing NASA's first deep space rocket built for human space travel since the Saturn V. Engineers are making progress toward delivering the first SLS rocket to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida for its first launch on the Artemis I lunar mission, the power to explore beyond Earth's orbit. To fulfill America's future needs for deep space missions, SLS will evolve into increasingly more powerful configurations. SLS is designed for deep space missions and will send Orion or other cargo to the moon, which is nearly 1,000 times farther than where the space station resides in low Earth orbit. The rocket will provide the power to help Orion reach a speed of 24,500 miles per hour, the speed needed to send it to the moon. Every SLS configuration uses the core stage with four RS-25 engines. The first SLS vehicle, called Block 1, can send more than 27 metric tons, or 59,500 pounds, to orbits beyond the moon. It will be powered by twin five-segment solid rocket boosters and four RS-25 liquid propellant engines. After reaching space, the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage ICPS, sends Orion onto the moon. The first three Artemis missions will use a Block 1 rocket with an ICPS. Block 1B crew vehicle will use a new, more powerful exploration upper stage, UES, to enable more ambitious missions. The Block 1B vehicle can, in a single launch, carry the Orion crew vehicle along with other cargo for exploration systems needed to support a sustained presence on the moon. The Block 1B crew vehicle can send 38T or 83,700 pounds to deep space including Orion and its crew. Launching with cargo only, SLS has a large volume of payload fearing to send larger exploration systems to the moon and Mars or for science spacecraft on solar system exploration missions. The next SLS configuration Block 2 will provide 9.5 million pounds of thrust and will be the workhorse vehicle for sending cargo to the moon Mars, and other deep space destinations. SLS Block 2 will be designed to lift more than 46 T, or 101,400 pounds, to deep space. An evolvable design provides the nation with a rocket able to pioneer new human spaceflight missions. Starship's Progress Starship's progress differs significantly from SLS and Orion. Much of Starship's early work was very secretive. They shrouded even the Raptor engine program in mystery until Elon showed videos of it at AIC 2016. The Raptor engine started its development around 2012. Since then, it has gone through a lot of testing. To date, there are 26 Raptor engines built, many of which are in pieces now. Most likely only a handful that is truly flight capable at this point. But that number is transforming as SpaceX cranked out most of them in just 2019 alone. Starting with Starhopper, it is the only Starship prototype to propulsively fly. Its 20-meter and then 150-meter hops are the only flights so far. Then we saw the MK-1 full-scale prototype come together and subsequently blow its lid off. SpaceX was concurrently building a similar prototype in Cocoa, Florida. It was a way for two teams to work on different methods of construction simultaneously, in a friendly competition. SpaceX abandoned the MK-2 prototype and it is still just hanging out there in Florida. 
On December 9th, SpaceX's Starship SN8 prototype soared up the Texas sky with the vehicle flowing more than a couple of hundred meters upwards for the first time. The launch was greeted with praises and named as no less than a success even though the spaceship exploded while descending back to the pad. NASA too started a test for SLS only to put a stop on it immediately due to the liquid oxygen's varying temperatures while flowing across the tank. If we observe both events closely, we can see the differences in its approach. While NASA is prudently watchful, SpaceX is fast and sometimes reckless. If there had been a comparison chart between the two, the obvious parameter to judge them upon would be the cost. SLS is far more expensive to build, with at least $2 billion to put aside per launch. On the other hand, Starship is drastically cheaper, with a cost of a minimum of $5 million and should be fully recoverable and reusable. While it's tempting to roll eyes at SLS, the risk tolerance is indeed very different for an over-budget government-controlled program of a one-man army private program. Furthermore, one must keep in mind that the SLS and Starship are used to serve two different scenarios. Although Starship has been designed as a deep space spacecraft, it is mainly designed as a heavy lift launcher for in-orbit dual transfers and to carry payloads to the moon. On the other hand, the SLS rocket is envisioned to be a part of NASA's Artemis moon program to return their astronauts to the moon by 2024. In other news, SpaceX's latest Starship prototype could fly as early as this Sunday after the successful 41,000 feet high altitude test. Although SLS does seem like a giant wingless space shuttle, NASA made many changes to the vehicle. For instance, they improved its performance and lowered its costs. Here's a quick rundown of the changes. The SLS will have five-segment SRBs as opposed to the four-segment SRBs that STS had. Unlike the Space Shuttle, these boosters lack any recovery hardware. They also feature a redesigned plug that keeps unwanted stuff out of it. The redesign ensures debris will not potentially damage the nearby RS-25 nozzles. The core stage looks like a Space Shuttle external fuel tank. Other than that, there is virtually nothing in common with the external tank other than its color and its 8.4 meter diameter. It uses a new aluminum AL2219. Its construction is distinct from the external tank. It even uses different welding techniques and even a new spray foam. SLS will have structural loads going down through the top of the tank as opposed to dangling off the side. Aerospace Rocketdyne tweaked the RS-25 engines since they used them on STS. They increased their power output from 104.5% to 109% or 111% in an emergency. But again, just like the SRBs, the RS-25D and later the RS-25E variants are expendable on SLS. Another cost-saving and timeline-helping decision were to fly the SLS initially with the upper stage from ULA's Delta IV and Delta IV Heavy. Known as the Delta Cryogenic Second Stage or DCSS, NASA changed it to fit on top of the 8.4-meter-wide core stage. This Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage ICPS, has different hydrogen tanks and more reaction control fuel than the Delta IV version. NASA intends for SLS to have a much more powerful upper stage known as Exploration Upper Stage. The upgraded stage, which is part of the Block 1B upgrade, will make SLS much more capable, although it will not see the light of day until 2025 at the earliest. Orion spacecraft. Next, we need to talk about the Orion spacecraft that sits on top of this entire vehicle for the Artemis missions. Orion is a fairly traditional conical crew spacecraft. In some ways, it is a newer and larger version of the Apollo command module. Although Orion looks similar, it is bigger than it might appear. It is substantially a roomier vehicle at 5 meters wide versus the Apollo command module's 3.9 meter width. Orion also sports a whopping 9 cubic meters of pressurized volume compared to 6.2 cubic meters for Apollo. This allows Orion to carry up to 6 astronauts compared to a normal Apollo astronaut complement of 3. For Skylab, they altered the Apollo command module so it could carry 5 astronauts in an emergency. The original name for the Orion spacecraft was the Crew Exploration Vehicle. That's when it was in development for the Constellation program, but it has transformed since then and now features another cost-saving measure, a service module based on ESA's automated transfer vehicle. How did we get here? How does it seem like we have two completely super rockets going online at the same time? 
NASA has been working on SLS and Orion for nearly a decade. If SpaceX had approached NASA with Starship in 2011, it would be analogous to trying to sell a farmer in 1870 a GPS-guided 9.0L turbo diesel-powered 4-track 8RX410 John Deere tractor. However, all they were looking for was to purchase a plow for their horse. They just would have not believed you if you mentioned the tractor. When NASA started working on SLS, the thought of a rocket-like starship would have been utterly ludicrous. Even today, many people think it is insane and likely to fail. Starship seemed impossible until it wasn't anymore. Should NASA just cancel SLS and use Starship and other commercial launchers instead? Let us know what you think in the comments section below.